Yeah, I mean, feels great. Um, the way we played in the last two games, I thought we were brilliant. Um, we were pretty, you know, clinical in in the second test match, especially. Um, I was under a little bit of pressure to, um, you know, going into the toss. Um, well, I thought, you know, toss was pretty vital. Um, so winning, you know, the the first hurdle was to win the toss and then um, to get a, you know, decent um, score on the board because the wicket was getting worse and worse. So uh, once again, it was a pretty you know, special performance by Kusal Mendis, you know, getting us to 281 and, um, you know, special mention to, to Dilruan after having a quiet, you know, first test, came back really hard. Uh, he backed his, you know, potential skill and, um, you know, he was, he was one bowler who the Australians found it really hard to score off, um, especially on this track. Yeah, I mean, uh, well, my team, you know, backed me um, uh, right throughout, and, and special thanks to my team and also, you know, SLC for for, back, for backing us uh, right throughout, and also the selectors. They backed us. They said, I mean, yeah, we'll get a bit of stick, we'll lose a few games, but uh, if we do our processes right, we will along the way win a you know win a few games, and you know, to be the number one team is very very satisfying, and we should thank. All, all of the MSLC selectors, the team, and also uh, the fans for being there with us. Um, you know, it's never an easy task when you lose games to keep persevering, you know, keep continuing. But, you know, my team is, um, I'm very grateful to my team because, um, you know, they've, they've um, uh, you know, supported me right throughout. Yeah, I mean, you know, in 2011 as well, uh, well, I thought the 2011 wicket was turning more than this. Uh, it was turning square. Um, but I thought uh, the Australians had a few few experienced players. And also, um, you know, they had the, the lights of Ricky Ponting and Michael Clark, who played spin really well. Um, yes, it was a tough series for us, but I think it's, uh, well, you can't really compare the two teams. I mean, it's, um, you know, they had a good team, um, but they, they still have a good team. I mean, they are the number one team. So, um, well, I thought we played better cricket than them. Angelo, uh, can you just describe the difference between what you felt, you know, on the way back from England and now after having beaten the top team? Because personally, what was the difference? Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, especially after England, you know, we were down and out and we were, we were struggling with our confidence and we knew that we had to fight really hard. We had to work really hard in all three aspects of the game. And I, it's very pleasing to see um, a massive turnaround. I mean, when things go well, it, it all happens for the, you know, for the best. And, uh, and I thought we feel it extremely well in the last two games. We, we, um, we had to um, be scrappy when it, when it comes to batting. Uh, it, was, it was not easy. I mean, when you play on extreme conditions, you've got to find a way to um, try and get get runs. It was not easy. They are bowling. I mean, you know, Mitchell Stark, you know, you should give you know credit to him. The way he bowled on this flat track didn't offer any any sort of help for the seamers and, and the way he bowled and he bowled his heart out and you know credit should go to him as well. Samji, uh, was there a pre plan to attack the spinners, especially when you were running? You were pretty much attacking the spinners, especially Lions. So was there any plan before the game? Uh, not really. I mean, uh, you know, as I said before, when you're playing on extreme conditions, you can't just block the cricket ball. I mean, you're eventually going to get out um, with either short leg or LBW. So you got to start scoring runs. You got to sweep. You got to reverse sweep. And and sometimes you you'll still make a mistakes, but um, but um, you know you will find a way to score runs and and upset the lens and the lines of the bowlers. Well, it's never easy when you're bo um, when you're facing good quality spin on a turner like that. It's it, it's never easy. I mean, um, you know, we have good quality spinners in Dilru and Sandakan and and Rangan here. They are experienced campaigners and they know exactly what pace to bowl and how to how to bowl on these types of wickets. Uh, 
Well, sometimes when we go to overseas conditions and you know foreign conditions, we struggle as well. So they've they've struggled in the in the last two games, and and we are not writing off them. I mean, still we want to win three nil, and um, you know we want to go for it in Colombo as well. I mean, we'll try our best to do that. Um, yes, I mean um, they look a bit um, uh, lost um, when it comes to our, our spinners. I mean, our spinners have bowled extremely well. I mean, you can't take anything away from them. But, um, yeah, I mean, they found it a bit hard to, to score off our spinners. Great. Okay. Uh, Sean Marsh was one of the guys who scored 100 last time he was played for uh, Sri Lanka's uh, 100 on his debut. Uh, are you a bit surprised uh, that he's not featured in any of the two test matches? Um, I, I actually didn't follow the last few games, which are, you know, which Australia played. But, but I think they... they uh, you know, one thing that um, they want to have is continuity, and and I think um, you know the this this team has played the last few games. Um, I assume so they were looking at continuity, but I'm I'm sure there'll be a change in the next next game. Uh, we hope that he doesn't call it a day in the next couple of years. Uh, and uh, yes, we have um, a very good spin attack, and uh, but we need the fast bowlers on track as well because we are not going to play in Sri Lanka forever. So we are going to go um, to foreign conditions and we need the fast bowlers uh, as well. So we need to work on our fast bowling as well. Champak is doing a pretty good job. Uh, the support staff is um, um, on the job. So, so hopefully we can get a good few fast bowlers who are fit and ready to go. Andrew, uh, you didn't seem to bowl something and much uh, in this match. Is that uh, because you were so far ahead of the game that you want to keep him a little bit uh, concealed uh, heading into the third test? Is that part of the thing? No, not really. Each time I wanted to bring him, uh, well, either Dilruan or Angana got a wicket. So I couldn't change them. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, well, Dilruan was bowling brilliantly. I mean, he looked like taking a wicket in every single ball, so I had to just keep bowling him. And, and Rangana Herath on the other end keeps the pressure on the batsman all the time. So they were bowling um, brilliantly. Uh, and uh, well, well, Sandakan didn't get you know much of a chance to, to bowl on that wicket. Last Andrew, are you really surprised that the operation we got from Australia the number two the great opposition from the no, I mean, uh, look, to be the number one, I mean, you've got to play consistent cricket, uh, uh, whether it's at home or away. And they've, they've played uh, on spinning tracks. They've just been uh, from West Indies. They played a couple of test matches there and also a one-day series. So, so they are used to um, spinning conditions. It's just that we played better cricket than them. Last uh, in English. Of course, I mean, you know, we we always thank them for for being with us. Um, you know, we had a we had a really hard time in the last eight months. You know, as you said, we we got a lot of stick, um, but they still kept believing in us. They kept supporting us, and we are very very thank you know thankful and grateful to all of them.